Hi. While making last week's video about VST plugin management, I also realized that not everything is always fine and peachy with plugins in Cubase. For example, sometimes Cubase crashes when you load a certain project or even directly on startup, and that can be caused by a plugin behaving badly or just plainly having a bug. Now, if you've ever ran into a problem like this, you may remember that it can be quite scary, like, have I lost all my work that I've done so far? So in this video, I'm going to talk about a few ways of dealing with that situation, a plugin behaving badly, and even if you have never experienced this yourself before, it's always good to know how to deal with this because you know what they say, it's not if you're going to run into it, but it's more when are you going to run into it. So let's go. Now, if Cubase quits or hangs while starting up or while loading a certain project, it is possible that one of the installed VST plugins is causing this trouble. You may, for example, see a message like this while loading a project or starting up Cubase. Now, a very effective way to deal with this situation is by hiding certain plugins from Cubase so that you can see if they are the ones that are causing the problem during startup. But the first thing to try to see if the problem is really plugin related is by starting up Cubase without loading third party plugins. So let's have a look how to do that. So here's my Cubase. Now the idea is that as soon as I've opened up Cubase, I need to push Ctrl Shift Alt to enter the save mode dialog in which I get the option to disable third party plugins. So let's do that. So you really have to be pretty quick, but as you can see, you get this dialog save mode. It reminds you that you activate the save mode by pressing Ctrl Shift Alt during program startup and the following troubleshooting options are available. Now this is the one we care about now to deactivate all third party plugins so that if Cubase starts and your project loads, then at least you know it has something to do with a third party plugin. These options below here is in case there is any corruption of program preferences, but that's not something I'm going into now. So let's start up like this. So if I'm not loading a project for now, you can see that if I go to the plugin manager that I discussed in detail last week. So if you haven't seen that video, I will link it in the description. But if you look at the list of plugins now, you see that all of them are Steinberg related. So only Steinberg related plugins are currently loaded. And the next step is to load the project that was giving you problems. So let me load my project here. And as you can see, during loading of the project, Cubase warns that it cannot find a lot of the plugins that it has in this project. And that's because I disabled all third party plugins. But let's okay this. So you can see that the project starts up. If you go to the mixer view, you can see that all plugins over here have three exclamation marks before and after them which means that Cubase did not load that specific plugin. And well, I'm using a lot of third party plugins, so it's basically all of them. But when your project does start up in safe mode without loading all the plugins, then at least you know that it's probably one of those plugins that are causing problems. So the next thing to do is to find which plugin is causing the startup problem. And this can be quite a lot of work to find the misbehaving plugin. So it does help if you kind of can limit the options. Maybe you remember that the problem started after you added a lot of plugins on the mix bus. So then you can now go to the mix bus here on the right side. And let me shift this to the left a bit so that you can see this. So if you know that the problem started after you added plugins to the mix bus, then you know that one of these plugins may be the culprit. But let's assume that you cannot really relate the startup problems to certain plugins already. What can you do then? Well, first of all, you need to locate where plugins are installed in Cubase. So for that, I'm going to start up Cubase again without suppressing third party plugins. And then you can go to Studio VST Plugin Manager. As you can tell, now all my plugins have loaded again, but I have not opened the project as a problem yet. But what you want to know is these plugin paths over here. Where are plugins installed? And these are just the VST2 plugins, because the VST3 plugins are basically always installed in the same location. And I will link a Steinberg article to further explain about VST plugin locations. For VST2, it is possible that certain paths were added. For example, over here for my lexicon plugins, that's an added path. And this is also an added path. But the default paths for VST2 plugins are program files VST plugins, Steinberg VST plugins, common files VST2, and common files Steinberg VST2. So if your Cubase does not open at all anymore, you can at least try these plugin paths to see if there's any misbehaving plugins in there. Now at this point, if you like this video or find it already useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you know when I post another video. It really helps because it makes YouTube show these videos to more people. 
And for even more support, for example, if this video saved you from throwing away a project, there's the super thanks button below or the affiliate links to any of these stores. If you buy anything at these stores after clicking one of those links, I will get a small commission without any extra cost to you. But now that you know where plugins are installed, how do you hide them from Cubase to determine which plugin is causing the problem? Let's have a look. So this is one of the most common plugin locations for VST2 plugins, program files Steinberg VST plugins. And if I go into that folder, you can see that I still have quite a few VST2 plugins installed here. Although I try to install only VST3 since VST2 is going to disappear soon from Steinberg applications. So what you can now do is, for example, if you want to try just disabling all plugins from this folder over here, you can rename this folder by adding hidden behind it, for example and you will get a message from Windows that it doesn't allow you to do it unless you have administrative privileges. So let's do it anyway. And just an example of which plugins are in here. Pulsar 1178 is in this plugin path. And if I now start up Cubase again, and I go to my list of installed plugins, you can see that the Pulsar 1178 is actually still there, but only the VST3 version is there. So not the VST2 version because I disabled it. So the idea is that you now load your problematic project again and see if it starts up now. And if it does start up now, then you know that the plugin with the problem is in this folder that you just hit from Cubase. So if you find this to be the case, you can again go to this folder. So you can now recreate plugin folder under the original name, for example. And maybe just copy all the plugins in the hidden folder, which are not in a subfolder. And put that in the new VST plugins folder. So now only a subset of the plugins are visible to Cubase. And again, you can start up the project, see if it still has a problem. And if not, then at least you know that these plugins are not to blame. So obviously it can take a bit of time to find the plugin that is causing the problem, but at least you have a way to save most of your project, except of course the problematic plugin. You really need to remove that from the project and substitute it by something different, or maybe download the latest version to make sure that any bug that's in there has been fixed. Now, and by the way, this technique also works for VST3 plugins, because there's also one single folder for VST3 plugins over here. And also here you can rename the folder to hide all VST3 plugins from Cubase and then gradually introduce them into a new VST3 folder to see when the problem occurs again so that you can find a problematic plugin. And if you have any other or better tips to deal with these problems, please leave them in the description. I'm really curious and I'm sure all the other viewers would like to know as well. Now, as for file locations, sometimes it can also be quite confusing where your audio files are stored in Cubase and what you can do if one of those audio files seems to have disappeared. Now I have a separate video about that over here. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon.